Hi everyone, I'm Dana, and welcome back to Inverter Always. We are episode five, episode six. We're about halfway through the ITM series, and in today's video, this should be a pretty simple video, but we're gonna be setting up the local area connection, your IP settings, and possibly also setting up remote access, just depending on your application. We'll talk about it in today's video. You guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below, it really helps out my channel. And as always, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. All right, you guys, so to get started here, we're gonna open up our software. If you guys are standing in front of your ITM, awesome. We're gonna go down and we're gonna click on the menu list to get started. We're gonna go ahead and click on system settings and we're gonna click on that network icon. Now by default, the IP address that's set up for the ITM is 192.168.0.1 and this will almost always need to be changed if you're hooking up the ITM on a local area network. So depending on your application, if you're keeping the ITM on a local network, and that is you're not gonna have any sort of remote access set up, then pretty much whatever IP address is available, you can program. So for giggles, you know, we could say, all right, we're going to have 192.168.0. I don't know, 69. So we're going to program that in. Your subnet mask will very commonly remain 255.255.255.0. If this needs to change, then whoever the IT person is at your job site's location is going to give you all of this information anyways. So you just ask the IT person, hey, what? Uh, static IP address do you want me to program in? What's the subnet mask and what's the default gateway? So here's where they might say it's 192.168.0.1 as a very common gateway for a local network. Typically, if you're just gonna be using this on the local network, you don't need to program anything in for your preferred DNS or your alternate DNS. But if you are gonna be programming this for remote access, then they will give you, again, the IT people. They will give you a preferred DNS and an alternate DNS. Sometimes what I'll do, is I'll just program in, I think it's the, I think these are the the Google Google DNS settings. Um, I don't know the exact definition of these settings, but pretty sure these are just like the default Google settings for DNS, which typically work. Um, I'll just leave alternate DNS as zeros. Now from this point, you're good to go. So if the IT person says, all right, I want you to set up the ITM's IP address as 192.168.0.69, then great. When I click OK, this is going to reboot. And when it reboots, it's going to have this static IP address. The ITM cannot do a dynamic or changing IP address. It has to be programmed with a static IP address. Now, this is really, really important when it comes to remote access, things like DNet monitoring, which is something that Daikin will use to actually monitor all the equipment 24-7, 365. They need access to this ITM for the software. This IP address needs to be a static IP address. Now for remote access purposes, typically what's gonna happen on a building network is the ITM will have this IP address, but the IT person is actually gonna forward this port somewhere else onto the internet. And then they're gonna give you a totally separate IP address. And it's that separate IP address that you're gonna use in Google Chrome or your Explorer tab to actually access the ITM. You dial it up and you're going to dial it up with a particular port number. That port number can be used or programmed into the web server here. The custom port is 80, but let's say I need to change it to something else. This number is going to be something that the IT person gives you. They're going to say, I want you to put that IP address on port 8080. For example, you say, okay, and then we're going to click on OK. Here's where we're going to reboot. So now that we've rebooted, all this is going to just, you know, take a minute to initialize once it finds all the equipment and the icons go back to normal. We're going to go back in, we're going to go back to system settings, and now we need to set up access for this network. So we're going to click on web access users. This is where we're going to create a user account. So when you dial up that IP address, you're going to be able to log in because there is a firewall built into the ITM that requires a username and a password. And there is no default. So you can't get in unless you program something on the ITM. So we're going to create a new user account. And let's just call this, I don't know, Dana Master User. Because why not? Is this user a manager or a user? 
if they're a manager, they will have access to everything on the ITM. If they are just a user, then you're going to have to specify what area this user has access to. Does this user have access to the A wing, the B wing, or the ventilation equipment, the ERV? Often what you'll do, or often what we've done in the past for like a college campus where we have a VRF installed in all the dorms, is we can actually set up each kid, each college student's room with a remote access account so that they can actually go online and they can change the settings from pretty much anywhere in the world. And that's a very neat feature the ITM offers. Uh, if I don't want to do that and I just said, nope, Dana Master User is a manager and we're going to give them access to everything, great, we need to create a password. So the password might be, I don't know, Dana is the best. I like it. You have to re-input the password, Dana is the best. And as long as you re-input the password correctly, now you're good to go. You hit OK. Then we hit close. Unless you need to add more users, you can go ahead and follow that same process, rinse and repeat, add all the people you need to add, hit close. And now when I dial up this IP address, I will basically be able to remotely access the equipment. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. So once you guys have dialed in the IP address to your Google Chrome browser or whatever browser you're using, you're going to go ahead and you're going to log in with the credentials that you set up on the Daikin ITM. I'm going to go ahead and blur these out because it is a real job site we're going to be logging into. And here is the successful login to a ITM. So when you guys log in, you'll be able to control it just like you would if you were standing in front of it. Yes, this one does have an error and that's how you know there's that yellow exclamation mark. So yeah. If you guys enjoy today's video, hopefully everything was set up properly on your end. The IT personnel is absolutely critical to make sure that you get all the settings correct. They'll give you all the settings that they want you to use. Just make sure you program those in properly, create that user web access account and everything else should go pretty smoothly. If you have an older version, I think it was version 2.05 and earlier then you're not going to have support for HTML5, which means you're not going to be able to uh, remotely access your ITM. So you are going to have to make sure you upgrade that ITM to a later version. We're using 2.10, which has HTML5. Basically, we got rid of the Flash uh, support. And so now that we're not having Flash support, we can't access those ITMs. So you do have to make sure to have one of the latest versions of software for this to work. But yeah, if you guys have any questions on setting up your local or remote access. So put the questions in the comments below you guys. I read all of your guys' comments. I always do my best to respond as well, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a wonderful day.